Welcome to another episode of Ultimate Network Administration. My name is David, and today we will be talking about VPC domains. So, here we have two switches. You'll see on this switch over here, we have VPC domain 1. We have role priority 100. We have a peer keep alive destination and source addresses. We have peer config check bypass, auto recovery, and IP arc, arc synchronize. Over here on the other switch, we have VPC domain 1, so the VPC domains match. The role priorities are different, so this one is higher. Uh, the lower of the role priorities is the one that actually takes the primary role. As you can see, the uh, peer key plot destination uh, does not match, but it's flip flop, so the destination is. 1.1.1.1 here and 1.1.1.2 over here. Uh, peer config check bypass is enabled on both and so is auto recovery and IP ARP synchronize. Uh, and down here you can see where we have the VPCs that are enabled. So what is a VPC? So we will drag this guy over here. Here we have two Nexus switches and we have the, the basis for a virtual port channels. So that's what VPC stands for. So in order to have virtual port channels, you need a VPC peer keep alive link. And that can be across a management interface or another interface as long as it's a routed interface. You can have you have to have what you call a VPC peer link, and that is two minimum of two bundled. 10 gig ports that are in an ether channel, LACP or PAGP, uh, they have a port channel associated with those and you have the statement inside the, uh, the ether channel that says it is a VPC peer link. So that's how virtual port channel knows what link to use as the peer link. Uh, so basically this is just a way to utilize two segregated switches that aren't stacked they are independent of each other and that's that's how you can hook hosts up to like say this port one up here and port one down here move that down to a server so you can utilize both of those links in an ether channel and not have to do it to a stack so if one goes down the other one still stays up and it's completely independent of the other switch so Basically, VPC is good if it's configured correctly. Uh, the role priorities have to be different, and you have to you have to notate which one you want to be the primary switch. Otherwise, they'll fight with each other, and you, you may have inconsistencies. So you can go into VPC and do a show, or into the switch and do a show VPC. Um, let's see, consistency parameters global and you can actually see all of the pieces of VPC you can see everything that it negotiates so over here we'll do it just a show VPC so here you can see the VPC domain ID the peer status the peer keep alive status configuration consistencies the VLAN status the VPC role is this one secondary and the no, number of VPCs configured. Um, it will also let you know if you're using a graceful consistency check and auto recovery as well. So the auto recovery dis, uh, status is enabled and the default is 240 seconds. That's why it's not set in the config itself. So VPC is a great tool, just has to be configured correctly. And a lot of times people just don't understand what VPC is actually capable of. So they really just disregard its benefits and really the power that it can do. So I hope that you've learned a little bit from this. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. Let's do a show. Do a show uh, VPC domain one here. Here's all the things that you can do. So you can do auto recovery. You can set a delay. Uh, set what happens if it's dual active. 
So that dual active is whenever the VPC peer link goes down, um, but both are still in an active state. So the one that was secondary is now primary, and the one that was primary is primary again. So that's what uh, you would go into dual active and actually set what you want to uh, maybe exclude from this suspension. So if, let's see, if secondary fails, then you'll have any orphan ports, you'll have those shut down, those VLANs shut down if you have a dual active scenario. Um, those are what's called orphan ports. And orphan ports are basically any VLAN that traverses this link right here. So that, that VPC peer link, anything that traverses that port channel is considered an a orphan port and those will be shut down so that's what uh, you want to exclude is, is what the dual active is for um, my apologies on the first statement uh, so there's you can set uh, you know IP addresses or uh, peer config check bypass peer gateway so that layer 3 forwarding, forwarding um, actually happens at the peer gateway uh, peer keep alive you set you know the hello times and whatnot um, so you can set peer switch, which basically means that both, from a spanning tree perspective, both Nexus switches act as the same root bridge for your uh, data center. Uh, you can set the role, the role priorities, uh, system MAC address, system priority, system priority is the spanning tree priority. Uh, you can track interfaces, um, all kinds of different stuff. So you can do that on both of those. Uh, really just depends on what you want to do uh, in order to get these functioning properly. It just depends on your network. So I hope you have learned something. Uh, if you've got a question, just shoot me a comment. Uh, comment, tell me if you like it, tell me if you don't like it. Like it, thumbs down, <laughs> or subscribe if you really do like it. Uh, I'll put more videos if you request. Thank you.